Uh, no, I just feel like I talk the rest of the time. Not <laughs> it'd be like most churches. Yeah, then it'd be like most churches, right? <laughs> Probably make me rich still, but I'm gonna make you go alive. No, it's okay. Yeah. Anyway, but they they uh, they didn't like the fact that I did that. They said, "Tell the channel." Yeah, and I really don't care if people like it. Amen. I never, I never have cared anyway in the first place. Amen. I wouldn't be where I was today. The Lord would have brought me where He has if I would have cared what everybody thought. Yeah, respect <laughs> right? Amen. Whatever. It's funny because then a bunch of other people say how they're helped by it. Right. Yeah. Right. And I've talked to a lot of people that I'm glad you preached on this because nobody ever talks about it. Nobody ever talks about this charismatic movement, the nuts. Why do you think? You know how many? Hey, by the way, do you know how many? Um, I should just start recording this because I. Am, I might say something that might profit something to somebody. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Right? Um, anyway, you know you know how many people, how many Baptist, ex-Baptists fill the ranks of charismatic churches? Oh, tons. Yeah. Want to know why? Because their pastors don't preach against it and inform right. people Amen. and actually teach them. Right. Yeah. They never got saved. Right. Well, and, but a lot of them get caught up in the hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the emotional. Because if you go to a Sammy oh, Allen meeting, if you go to a Sammy Allen meeting, or one of those guys down south, yeah. one of those hyper spasmatic, insane, crazy psychopath, run around nuts, nut job, fake Baptist down there that think they have the power of God when they don't know what the power of God is, they've never experienced it. They don't have people falling out, getting right with God, and actually turning from their sin and living a life of holiness and righteousness. What do they have? Hype. That's what they have. They have a bunch of hype. And when you build a church on a bunch of hype and a bunch of nonsense, you have a bunch of deadheads. You've got a bunch of airheads that don't know anything that go to church because they, they're supposed to. Because they're dead. I wasn't supposed to raise my voice and get excited today. I was supposed to, was supposed to be a teaching time. Anyway, but when you have that, when you see that, it's no wonder why the... By the way, do you know that Mormons are the same way? Yep. Mormon churches, Mormon cults, and all those other groups are fill, filled with ex-Baptist church members. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Why? Because, first of all, they never got saved. They got a one, two, three, repeat after me. Right. But the second right. reason is because Baptists don't teach on anything anymore. Right. Right. They don't teach... All they teach is make sure you put your money in the offering plate. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You know what? I expect you to give to God because you are being fed. Because that's the right thing to do. I don't. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have meetings about that. And have uh, evangelists come in and, and try to get you to give money. Yeah. If you don't love God enough to give money, that's your problem, not mine. Right. Right. I'm not gonna beg you for it. I'm not gonna beg you to obey God. I'm never gonna do that. He'll use the crows. That's right, and he has. So it's just. But that's what they concentrate on. They have to. They have to pump up their political system. Yep. Yeah. It's a political system, and they have yep. to keep it going. They have to keep it pumped up. And that's why people like that will never like people like us. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> because we actually preach what it says right. and Amen. try to inform you the truth yep. and hold you accountable for it. Yep. That's yeah. right. And not so your number one evangelists are out there running around fornicating and committing adultery right. and, and, and you're pumping up, giving them big offerings, thousand dollar offerings, they have these big huge campaigns of nothing. It reminds me of the charismatics. Why do you think people are so comfortable going over those holiness movements? Yep. Man, I'm telling you, as much as I've seen those those holiness yeah, people, unholy. how come they're not holy? Right. Right. <laughs> Their whole movement is called the holiness movement, but none of them are holy. Right. Right. Charismatic little holy. Have you yeah, have you watched what they watch what they do? Yeah. It's yeah. Unbelievable. None, it of just, them, none of them have lost their salvation. That's for sure. Right. Straight. Yeah, none of them lost their salvation. They always preach you can lose it, but they never lost it. <laughs> no, right. almost. They come close. They come real close. <laughs> that one time not I quite. came so close. <laughs> <laughs> no, so <laughs> came close that time. Well, how'd you come that close? What'd you do? I don't know. There's no real formula. It just happens. How do you know you were close? <laughs> so, close. so what's the Bible? What's the, what's the biblical example? Scene. Yeah. That what's the biblical good. example of someone losing their salvation? Not there. Right, right. You don't have one. Unless you don't have it, right. That's right. And what about What lots? you do have is a lot of false converts. That's what you yeah. do have. Yep. Right. Yeah. Never had Right? It. So, anyway, the, the, the holiness movement, the Pentecostal movement, you know, has completely pretty much morphed into the charismatic movement today. Right. Which has gotten much worse. 
Um, and we're going to talk about spiritual gifts today. Bible instructions for divine healing versus demonic divine healers. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And there is a difference in divine healing. And, and I, I believe in divine healing. I believe God heals. Amen. I'm even going to show you the instructions that God gives us Amen. about healing in the Word of God. What I do not believe in is demonic divine healers. Yeah. Right. From the charismatic movement. Right. Right. Because they're not real. That's right. Amen. And if they are, they are counterfeit. Right. Just like the, they're those spirits like frogs that came on them. Right? Yeah. They are counterfeit spirits. Yep. And they are working counterfeit miracles. They are working signs and lying wonders. Yep. If they yep. do. Because you know what? To tell me that somebody got healed at a crusade, let me tell you, that doesn't impress me. You know why? Because witch doctors have done it before. Yeah. Witch doctors have That's reset right. bones. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, shaman priests have done that. Yep. Yep. And a lot of uh, Satan has done it. Yep. Okay? Yep. So, that's not impressive. That doesn't mean it's of God. Right. 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 Well, go to the root and see. Yeah, go to the root and see. I, I'm not going to say that they're all fake. That none of them have healed somebody. I, I believe some of them may have. Right. Part of doesn't prove anything. But it doesn't prove anything, right? right. We believe by faith. Amen. We believe what the Word of God says. You know, like some charismatic, another one got mad. You didn't disprove tongues. Oh, come on. I was like, okay. I just looked at their comment and I, I was laughing at it because you didn't, all you did was give some commentary. Are you kidding me? I filled that thing with like hundreds, uh, with like probably 30 or 40 scriptures at least. Of things that disprove what you were, what 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 they call the modern day tongues yeah. movement. Yep, that's, yep. that's a joke. You did, you know, the it's your yeah, it's your job to disprove what I said because you have to prove that your miracles are real. Right. right. Yeah. The yeah. Burden on proof. That's what you have to prove. You have to prove they're real miracles. That's right. not our no. Right. Well, most churches today again are not at war with anything. Right. And that's what the real problem is. I want to be where there's a war going on, where there's always a war going on, where it's never, where it's, where there's never this quietness of uh, from the battlefield. Not, not that we don't leave and pray and seek and seek God's face or that, but I mean that there's always a war with Amalek. There's always a war with Satan going on. There's always a war against His kingdom. Right. You'll get rest when you're in heaven, friend. Amen. It's not time to rest now. It's time to work for the night is coming. Amen. It's time to war against darkness. Right. Amen. It's not time to sleep. Amen. You'll get time to sleep someday. Amen. Now it's time to work. Amen. 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 It's time to work. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 10. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work at that one and self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So not all work miracles. Because verse number 29, if you go down there, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. Of course not. But and he says here, and he says here, but covet earnestly the best gifts. What are those? Well, those aren't the sign gifts. Right, right, right. Why? Because those are going to fade away. Those aren't the sign gifts because they're not going to be around. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. What is that way? 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Right. Charity never faileth. Amen. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Those, that knowledge is that word of knowledge, that special, that knowledge that it took basically to write the word of God as, yeah. they, as they pen the word of God. Yeah. John had knowledge. that special knowledge, right? He had that special knowledge, and that's, and that's what that was for. So, so he had that, and that's, that's what John used, and that's what I believe the writers used. Just like, for the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So that's what I believe their knowledge, their word of knowledge was... For and it wasn't necessary anymore once we had the word of God. Right. It isn't necessary. You don't need it anymore. It's not important anymore. So that's that's important to understand. Now, all right, so let's pray. Father, Lord, we pray you bless us now. Help us, Lord, as we dig into this, Lord, and we understand this these miracles, Lord, or this, this healing, Lord, especially divine healing, Lord, and versus the divine healers. Help us, Lord, to understand your biblical instructions for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, it's very important that you and I understand that 
there are divine instructions in the scriptures about healing and about what the church's responsibility is to that. And you'll notice I said church because in the Bible, the only instructions that are given about divine healing or a process to go through is through the church. That's right. Amen. If you despise the Lord's church, you can't claim James chapter 5. You can't claim that. Right. Why? Because you're not a member of a local church and you don't have any right. you don't have any elders that rule over you. That's right. So how could you just come together? How could you ever claim that? How could you ever claim anointing something somebody with oil and doing those things? There's a lot of misconceptions about that. So we're going to cover that today in this because I feel like if you're going to take away the false uh, signs and lying wonders that some of these people have, then you have to give the yeah. truth what Amen. the Bible says and what the instructions are Amen. Right. for that. And a lot of good stuff in Way of Life Encyclopedia. Again, I, I, I don't recommend everything David Cloud says, but Way of Life Encyclopedia is a great is a great resource. Amen. He's documented and covered a lot of things, and it's just too bad that a lot of preachers don't use it because it's all referenced right there. A lot of it is. Right. And makes studying and, and a lot of that time cut down a lot, a lot easier. You know, to get through some of that. And while I don't agree with everything that David Cloud says, I believe he has a lot of it right. And he understands the charismatic movement. Yeah. Right? <laughs> he understands yeah. the dangers yeah, of the charismatic yeah, movement. Of and um, yeah, I think that book, Nate, was that book free, The Charismatic, The History of Charismatic and Pentecostalism? Or I can't remember if that was free or free. PDF. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, it's free, short, isn't it? Yeah. It's the strange history of Pentecostalism. Yeah, that one's free. Yep. Yeah. I believe he gives it free, and it's it's a good resource. But the Way of Life Encyclopedia is a very good resource as well, and I think any of you young preachers ought to have that. Yep. It's five. It's like five to ten bucks on a download. Get that. I don't make any money doing that. I'm not selling it. I'm just telling you that it's a good resource to have. Yep. It really is. Yep. It it'll help you with your study time and putting together things and, and understanding because yep. he puts a lot of things in there that are not, you know, that that are not easy to find. It yeah. would take you years to research and study that you don't have time to. Format's really good. But you can use it. Yeah, the format is really understandable, easy to use, and you know there's a search engine there and everything else. So anyway, it's it's nice to kind of pull those things together. Again, I, I'm, I'm not selling anything. I, I'm just telling you that it's a good resource. So to help you out there as you're studying and some of you are studying, I think you should have that. All right. So there are many perversions today of the spiritual gifts. These perversions rear their demonic head today in the charismatic movement. Yep. They derive their origin from Satan. In the Bible, we read of the wizards and others that taught wickedness and performed miracles. So we have today men that claim to be divine healers with the gift of healing. First, we need to have a proper understanding of healing from the Word of God. We cannot just take the word of charismatics and false teachers with their sow a seed preaching and prosperity gospel, their pimp and prosperity gospel they preach, but, and then it's God's will to heal everyone. That right. the healing is found in the atonement. <laughs> Because that's what they teach. That's heresy. Well, healing is found in the yeah, atonement. That's heresy. That's no, wicked. no, it isn't. Yeah. No, it isn't. Yeah, it's wicked. You know, and, and we're going to prove that today. That healing is not found that's in the right. atonement. Uh, I'm going to show you through the scriptures that's not the truth. All right. Because basically, what you're telling somebody is, well, if you're sick, then you're not saved. Right. 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 It's wicked. Right. See yeah. how see how it twisted is. that is? Right. Right. That's what yeah. you're telling people. Yeah. You know. By the way, charismatics are not my brethren. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. They have to prove they're my brother by repenting yep. and believing the truth and turning from their vanities. Yep. Right, right, Amen. Right, right. Amen. Strange doctrine. I, I don't believe you. Amen. Yep. you got another spirit, right. another gospel. Yep. Let it be accursed. Amen. Amen. Right. you got a perverse spirit. Right. All right? So, number one, Christ's healing ministry was a unique ministry. You have to understand something. When Christ healed, it was unique. Turn to John chapter 5, verse number 36. I want to show you that John's ministry, I mean Jesus' ministry in healing was a unique ministry. It was not, why do you think it, everybody took notice? When God's about to do something, he does a miraculous sign and wonder why? to show that he's about ready to do something. All right, he did that with Moses in the burning bush and the miracles of throwing the rod down and turning into a serpent. He did it with all of those things. Why? Because God was showing that he was ready to do something. Right. Something spectacular. And he always did it with a sign and wonder. Amen. Amen. That's why we believe, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Right. Right? The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and right. the stars shall fall from heaven. Precursors. Right? What is that? Those are signs that God's going to do something. Right. He didn't tell us, well, you're going to be shocked. You're not going to know what's happened. No. He wrote it down in here for you to look up there and make, whoop, okay, we know what's going on now. Right. And two witnesses, that's right. Yeah, so, yeah, to always, always. 
So all the way through, he, he does that. He shows that to us. John chapter 5, verse number 36. Jesus said, But I have a greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me. Amen. How about that? Notice, Christ's healing was to call attention to apostate Israel who were unbelieving and needed a sign. They had to see a sign, so what did he do? He gave them one. Right. That's what That was his purpose of coming. We're going to get into more of that here. John chapter 10, verse number 37, please. Keep you flipping around your Bible today, amen? Amen. Remember, the Jews seek a sign. Signs and wonders were for the Jews right. that they might believe. Christ healed to prove that he was the Messiah. Yep. John chapter 10, verse number 37. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Right. Amen. What was it for? Very plainly. Remember, the sign gifts were temporary, only for a specific purpose. God used Moses the same way, Elijah, Elisha, and many of the prophets. All, all that. But how about John the Baptist, who was filled, the, filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb? He was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb, but he didn't do those miracles. Right, right. Why? So there would be no confusion about Amen. what was going on. Amen. He gave assurance to John because of the miracles. Right, exactly. Amen. That was a sign to John. That's right. The, and the poor hear the gospel. Yep. Blessed is he that is not offended in me. Yep. Right? Why? Because John started doubting. Yep. He was in prison. He was in a dark time of his life. We're going to talk about that possibly Wednesday. Dark places of the mind. Um, all right. So, um, John chapter John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost for his mother's womb, but never did any of those signs and wonders. John chapter 14, verse number 11. Yep. Jesus did these that you might believe. That's what those signs were for, for Israel, that they might believe. That's right. He said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Now, stop right. there for a second. I'll explain that in the end, but here's what the charismatics do. They take that verse... And they say, see, right. Jesus said we'd do greater works. Yes, he did. He didn't say you'd do greater miracles. Right. He didn't say you'd do miracles. Right. He said you'd do works. Yeah. And I think Peter on the day of Pentecost yeah. saw 5,000 people or 3,000 people saved, 1,000 yeah. saved. That was greater works than Christ did. Christ's ministry did not yield all of the yeah. fruit that we see later after Pentecost, after the Spirit came. Oh, man. Right? right? Amen. So what was right. that? Greater works. Right. Yeah, exactly. Salvation is the greatest work ever that Amen. God did. Amen. And right. preaching of the gospel is the greatest work that a man could ever Amen. do. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yep. Right. Amen. Not working miracles and doing all that. No. That's right. The greatest work is the gospel. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Of our he Lord Jesus Christ. Than these. That's Amen. right. Amen. Yep. So he said here, he said, he said, greater works, and I believe that. But not with the, the, the charismatics try to make that miracles. Yep. They could and preach signs he rose. and wonders. What's that? They could preach he rose. He hadn't risen yet when he said this. That's right. That's right. Man. That's true, too. John chapter 14, verse number 11. Oops, I did that one already. John chapter 15, verse number 24. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Yeah. Listen, the world's going to hate you when you show them their sin. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they are. False professors are going to hate you when you show them their sin. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. The world's not going to party with you. Right. That's why those charismatic are right? crazy when you're out preaching. They'll go see a Toby Mac concert, but they're right. not going to they're not going to hear come hear this preaching. Right. Christian when you're Dubstep. preaching right outside, yeah, Christian dubstep. When you're outside preaching out of that Toby Mac concert, yep. they'll hate you, but they'll, they'll love you. that music. Why? Yep. Right. Because it bears witness to their flesh. Yes, their right. spirit. Right. Yep. Love right. the things of the world. That's right. Yep. Now, John chapter 20, verse number 30. Again, these, he says this, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Why, why, why were these written? Why were they recorded? So you could mimic them? So you could copy those signs? 
Is that what he says here? Nope. No. No. Hey. He says, but these signs are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, hey. and that believing you might have life through his name. Hey. Yeah. You see that? That's right. the reason their signs were given. Right. To Amen. show that he was the Son of God. Hey. Amen. 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 Jesus. And the power of God. That's why they were not for and not for you to go copy and go like, okay, well, I need the gift of healing. Yeah, right. I need I need to speak in tongues. Why Jesus never spoke in tongues? Right. Uh -oh. Amen. Uh oh. <laughs> Must not have been saved. <laughs> yeah. Didn't have the evidence Did Jesus have the evidence of the Holy Ghost? He never spoke in tongues. Obviously. Huh. I wonder you charismatic con artist. I right. wonder if you could answer that. Amen. Yeah, by the way, that's actually part of the title when I put it on Servant Audio. It's going to be charismatic con artists. There you go. Because that's what they are. Yep. And I, I, but I'm not, I, I have no desire to pull anything <laughs> back Amen. when it comes to these devil-possessed people. Amen. Because they, they, are, they are bringing on the kingdom of Antichrist. Yep. That's, that's, right. Right. that's what they're doing. Right. They are bringing it on. Right. And we need to expose it. Amen. I'm tired Amen. of God's people uh, out on the street or wherever they're at and a charismatic walks up and says, well, do you have the evidence of speaking in tongues? Do you have, do you have, do you have the, and they say, are you filled with the Spirit? Do you have the evidence of this? And they start going off into all this stuff. Well, you don't have the evidence of this and everything else. No, you have the evidence of being a devil. That's, that's what right. you have. Right. Yep. Not the yep. Holy Ghost. Yeah, that's not the Holy Ghost. That's right. Holy Ghost means Amen. Live holy. Right. Amen. So by, the Bible is very plain. Jesus' ministry was a unique ministry. It was for if it wasn't unique, then why would people pay attention to the miracles if it was already going on all the time? Right. Right. If everybody was doing those miracles as supposed to, then why would it have been a difference? Right. Right. I mean, you don't even have to think that hard about this. It's so plain. Right. right. It's not hard to understand. Yeah. It's very simple. Very simple. Right. Right. So it's plain to see the works Jesus did and the signs and miracles were for a reason. So they would know that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Next, the apostles' healing ministry was a special ministry. Yep. It was not It was not to be mimicked or copied or tried to be copied later. That's, right. That's not what he said. Right. Like Christ, the apostles did not do miracles as a pattern for other believers to imitate. They did miracles as signs of their apostleship. Right. Right. By yeah. the miracles, they proved that they were called of God to be apostles. Yep. Now turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 <laughs> and verse number 12. And you see right here. Now, some of these charismaniacs, demonic devils, the demonic devil, devilish manifestations that come upon them and everything else, what they will try to tell you is, yeah, what they will try to tell you is that they are apostles, that the apostle, apostle ministry is, is carried through the fivefold ministry. I still believe in the apostles. So you've seen right. Jesus. Apostles right. Right. So. Okay. Okay. so truly, he says here in verse number 12, Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Yeah. So what is the sign of an apostle? They were signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Right. Also, if you go back through and you study it, am not I an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus Christ? Right. Yeah. Right. Those are the apostles. They saw Christ. Right. Paul was one born as one of born out of due time. Right. Right? Yep. Action. He saw special revelation. Right. Right. He saw. None of the other ones did. Nobody else around him. He did. Yeah. Right. Right. They didn't see what was going on. Paul did. Right. Right. But he proved it. Yes, he did prove it. And Christ came to him more than once. Right. right. At least twice. Right. right. Amen. And taught him, many believe, in yep. Arabia for three years. Yep. Three years. Yep. What's that? Amen. And he went to heaven, I believe. Yep. There's been some that argue that that wasn't him, but I believe it was. I believe that thorn. If that thorn in the flesh was given to him because of somebody else's vision, man, he got a raw deal. Yeah. <laughs> he said he. I wish he, he never he told me that. Yeah. He drowned yeah. in the sea. Got a, got a raw deal for that one, man. Somebody else had the vision, and I get the thorn in my flesh. Look at that. He said he was drowned in the sea. I didn't even see it. Why am I getting? Why am I getting the thorn? Why well, that guy told me that story? Some guy told me that story. Don't tell me any more stories, okay? <laughs> Right? Yeah. Some of you don't study enough, you don't know what I'm talking about. You better go back and look. Yeah. Amen. 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 So there were signs of an apostle, it says here. And those sign gifts were those signs and a few select men that were closely aligned with them as an extension of that temporary authority. Some of them had that temporary authority for a while. Some of that power extended to them for a short time. Right. And then it went away. It vanished away. Mm -hmm. Mark 3, verse number 14. See here, Mark chapter 3, verse number 14, their unique ministry. And he ordained 12, 
that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sickness, and to cast out devils. What was this? Special sign gifts given by Jesus. To the right. twelve. To the twelve. His power given to them to do what he had for them to do. Amen. Not the same as now. Later we see that we're given instructions concerning divine healing I'm going to get to. But also, the one thing you have to understand is that you cast out devils now through prayer. Amen. 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 That's right. right? Yep. Through prayer and fasting. That's right. Not the same way that the disciples did. It's not exactly no. the same method no. that they used. No. Right. The way that, why? Because they had the power of God on them, came upon yes. them. They had an extension of Jesus' power. They were, they were ordained by Him. Right. right, and then he ordained seventy also after yeah, that. Right, yeah. right. Okay, so that was a special extension of his authority. Right. Do you understand that? Yeah. We have his authority through prayer, right? Amen. Through Amen. baptism and through through the ordinances and through uh, ordination. Right. Yep. All right, we have that. We have authority as well. Okay. Right. However, it's not the same as it was for them. No. Nope. They when they cast out devils, they said that he did. They did it by the finger of God. They said Jesus did it by the finger of God. Right. Right? So it was a little bit different than it was. That now the charismatics would have you to believe it's absolutely the same. And they start talking to devils and having a conversation, act like they're Rocky or something. They're fighting the devils. They start playing the, the Rocky theme song behind them. And they're, they're boxing devils and doing all kinds of crazy stuff and, and acting like a bunch of morons and think that they're in the WWE of spiritual warfare. And, uh, you know, they're going to pile drive and they're going to they're going to they're going to they're going to power bomb the, the, the devil's legion. I'm going to drop an elbow on legion's head here right now and all this other stupid garbage. <laughs> Say who said that? Uh, nobody said it, but that's what they believe in their mind. <laughs> What's that? I'll kick drop you into hell. I'll it? kick drop drop kick you into hell. Yeah, that see that's that's the kind of stuff that they say and they do. Well, that's not the order that we have from God. That's chaos, and that's a big show that they're putting on because they don't. They're phony and they don't have any power of God. Amen. Right? They just don't. Yeah. So. You know, I refuse to let any of those devil-possessed, mm. yeah. satanic, false prophets try to discourage my ministry or try to discourage anything that I do for the Lord or try to, to lay a charge against us and point a finger at us that we don't believe. No, we believe the Bible. We just understand what it says. Right, right. Right. Man. Man. Sound doctrine. Right. You're trying to play kitty games. Right. You're playing dress up apostles, what you're playing. Yep. Okay? Yep. You want to play dress up apostle. That's what you are. You're getting your little yep. dress up outfit on. You're, you're going to dress up like an apostle yep. today. Go out with your big long white robes and your big long Hebrew beard and go out there and, 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 and speak a different language. I, I'm so tired of it. I, I'm tired of it. It's fake phoniness. Right. It's not the power of God. Right. And I'm sorry, there's some men that are falling for that stuff, like Bill Schneblin and other men. Yeah. And I'm t I'm tired of watching it. Yep. Yeah. yep. It's it's a ridiculous circus is all it is. Right. right. Now God either wrote this gave you this Bible in English or he didn't. Right. Right. Stop playing Jewish mystical games. Right. Talk about having talk about having uh, angels visit you and come into your room. No, I think your wife is nuts. That's what I think happened to you, okay? Yeah, right. Your wife runs around like a preacher like she's some anointed thing from God and she's teaching this garbage and you're letting her do it. Right. Yeah. It's wicked. Yep. And he yeah. needs to repent of it. And I and I hope somebody sends it to him. I don't care if he unfriends me or does it. He can do whatever he wants to me. Right. Get a suit on, put a tie on, put a shirt on, dress like an American, and go walk around like one and be just a man of this time where you're at right now. Stop trying to yeah. be, wear a, a Pharisee outfit and think you've got some kind of power of God on you. Hey. There ain't no power in what you're dressed like. Right. Okay? like that. There's no power in that. Right. At all, period. It's a bunch of charismatic nonsense. Right. Right. A bunch of Hebrew. Hebrew roots nonsense is all it is. Right, right. And there's no cover for it anymore. And look, look, these people, their minds are going deeper right. and deeper and deeper into their own insanity. Yeah. Right, right, yep. right. Amen. I mean, they, they can't call the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit. What do they got to call him? I can't even say that. Sounds like you're saying radish. I can't say that, okay? He's the Holy Ghost of God. That's what it says. Hey, Bill, how come this book was perfect for you before, but now there's something wrong with it? Yeah. Why you got to speak a different language now? Yeah. What's wrong with you? You need to repent. Yeah. 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 What's wrong? What's wrong? And he said, why don't you go talk to him in private? I don't have to talk to him in private. He's pushing this garbage everywhere. Right. Right. And people are falling for this nonsense. 
Right. 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 Get caught up in this Hebrew roots movement right. and all this other stuff. Right. A bunch of dressed up pharisaical nonsense right. is all right. it is. Right. Amen. That ain't the power of God. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Tell me you have angels yeah. visiting you. Sit down your living room. Have, what do they have? Coffee with you? Yeah. <laughs> we got the Bible. Give me a break. That's not his testimony. Some lady prayed for him. Took his power away. His name is Jesus. Right. That's right. Right. Jesus. Somebody right. prayed that his witchcraft would leave, That's and now right. he's got all these manifestations yeah. of all these other things coming to visit him and all this stuff. No, I think it's your wife, dude. Hey, That's what I think. She prayed the she name of devils. Jesus, not Yeshua. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. right. Took its power. That's right. Yeah. So That's to say to say that you got to pray in a different language and you have to say it a certain way. Well, listen, I'm about ready to do a sermon here real soon on all the names of God in the Bible. Amen. And I'm going to go through all of them and I'm going to ask somebody, which one of these right. names lacks the power of God? Right. Which one of these right. names aren't God? Amen. Right. right. Yep. Bunch of hypocrites. Right. 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 Which, which name is not? Right. right. I'm telling you, all it is is it's people get in their mind, they have to have this... Yep. this uh, Mysticism. This this fanaticism, right? They they've got to live in this fantasy. They got to have all these extra biblical, right. you know, uh, yep. signs, yep. and they have to have all these extra. And you know what it does? It get you, why? Because you can't just stick with the plain word of Amen. God, right. see the power yeah. of God, and right. serve the Lord Jesus Christ with your life. Right. You got to get into all this weird stuff and all this strange stuff, and and, and and all these like weird like have these systematic prayers that you have to pray in order to get deliverance. No, you don't need that. Right. You need the Word of God. Amen. Amen. You need a relationship with the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. Yep. 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 Your beard mean. size and the size of your gown, dress, gown that you're wearing and your, what is it called? Phylacteries. Yeah. Huh? Phylacteries. Thank you. Phylacteries. Thank you. Super wise. It's like a super wise. Those are the boxes. That hang from What's that? Those are the boxes that hang. Yeah. Okay. And then what's that thing they wear on top of their head? Wizard's hat? The cube thing? No, what's that thing they oh, wear? Yeah. Nora. A yamaka? A Yamaha? They put a Yamaha on their head? <laughs> God, though, God doesn't care about any of that stuff. Right. That's right. So do Catholics. Right. That doesn't give you any power. What do you got? Like a sorcerer's outfit you got to put on yeah. and walk around in these robes? Right. Come on, man. You're in America. You all, Who walks around looking like that? I'll tell you. Muslims do. Yeah. I'll tell you. People like that walk around like that. Yep. Yep. It's just, it's a bunch of nonsense. Right. Right. Stop playing Amen. dress up. Yep. Right. Amen. You don't have to be Jewish to be saved. That's right. right. Amen. Amen. And you don't have to act like a Judaizer to be saved. Right. Amen. Right. Yeah. You gotta repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Amen. And you're not gonna get any more power from God acting like a Jew. Right. In right. fact, it was condemned by Paul, acting That's like an right. Old Testament yep. uh, temple Jew. Yeah. It was condemned hey. by God. Paul said, What are you doing? What do you expect these people right. to act like this for? Yeah. Right. You expect Gentiles to be Jews? Yeah. Right. Even Peter said that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you guys are dragging people back and flirting around with that, right. that non that Bondage. Hebrew roots nonsense. Yeah. I'm done with it. I I I hey. listen, I'm not Holy punches. Bill should have needs to get right with God. Amen. Put it on YouTube. Put it in a separate file. I don't care. That guy needs to get right with God. Right. That guy is subverted. Yep. Yep. Right. And he's flirting around with a bunch of Hebrew roots heretics is what he's yep. doing. Walking and he's leading rabbi. many to stray. So I'll tell you this. Stay away from him until he wants to repent. Right. right. And he can pray against me. He can do whatever he wants to. But I'll tell you one thing. You show me where you got to put on all those robes and walk around and act like an Old Testament Jew. Walk in the streets of Jerusalem. Yep. Hey, Bill, you're from Dubuque, Iowa. <laughs> okay? All right, Bill, I'm from the Quad Cities. I'm from an hour from where you're from. Bill, we don't walk around in robes like that. You didn't get that accent for being in Israel. All right? We know you. I love you, man, but you got to knock it off because you're leading people astray. That's right. Preach it. Amen. You can't, you can't, I'm telling you, it's a slippery slope straight into the Hebrew Roots movement. Right. 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 Yep. And that's what it is. It's a bunch of nonsense. Right. Repent of it. Right. Right. God used you greatly when you just got out there and told the truth about Wicca, told the truth about Mormonism, and now it's just a bunch of confusing mess. Right. Can't even understand what you're saying. You write an article and you changed all... I got to get your old books because I can't even understand what you're saying in your new ones. You got all these yeah. Hebrew words and all this other stuff. God used you when you were speaking English, Bill. Get back to English. Yeah. Come on. Amen. 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 What's that? I got saved book. Yeah. Nate, Nate got saved reading his book. Blood on yeah. the doorpost. God used it. But I have Blood on the doorpost, and I think it's a great book. Amen. The old one from Chick Publications, it right. actually makes sense. Right. Yeah. Instead of all this new stuff where you've changed everything. I'm telling you, man, you don't got to do that. Knock it Amen. off. Amen. All right, I'm done.
Right. Reach right. it. Amen. That's Amen. a wrap. Fire it up. Amen. Hey, it's, 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 it's gone way over. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's way overdue. It's true. Yeah. I've, waited, I've, I've waited a long time, and it's too much. Reach it. It's getting worse. It's, it's getting worse, yeah. and people are getting sucked into that. Yeah. And the Hebrew Roots movement yeah. is rising, and I hate that movement. I absolutely yeah. hate it. Yeah. And I'm going to war against it, yeah. and we are going to be doing some radio shows against it's, that it's movement. It's tied together with the charismatic. Yeah. It is, yeah. and we're going to be doing some radio sure shows is. against yeah. some very strong-pointed, Nate Marino, 16-hour radio shows. <laughs> That'll be one sitting. One sitting. That's probably how I got injured, was because sitting in that chair for like six hours. <laughs> I know you can't. <laughs> hey, I think my lungs are doing all right. Yeah. Hey, praise God. I think so. Okay. Feels pretty good. Lord Amen. healed you. Amen. <laughs> I divine <laughs> healing on a day I needed it. I'm preaching on it. Love all right, so that's a. This is. But no one I don't know where that came from. Don't preach your way out of it. Makes you feel keep it up. What's that? <laughs> preach your way out of the hurt. Right. Preach your way out of the hurt. That's no right. No one laid their hands I, on you. I don't know how I got on that, but it just—I guess all the signs and wonders and all this other stuff is just. <laughs> Keep the same spirit, brother. It just—I had to. Okay. Anyway, all right. So, James did not say call up someone who has the gift of healing and have him heal. James didn't say go look for a divine healer. Go look and search the land for a divine healer. And by the way, none of the apostles were out pimping out their gifts, right. running around holding big meetings, being like, "Okay, come on over here, watch this." Pew. Watch this! Yeah, like Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> right? Nobody was, nobody, the apostles were walking around going, okay, I got a good one for you. Come here. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> nobody was doing that. Right. All right? Nobody, nobody was doing that. Right. No. That's a bunch of nonsense. Yeah, palm, palm to the forehead. Yeah, palm to the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get hit in the forehead. Yeah, it wasn't like that. But it wasn't it wasn't to mess with my chakra. That didn't cause any healing either. It didn't cause any healing well, either. My instructor was like, yeah, now break this board. Okay. Ah! You know, that's, that's what it was like. It wasn't, he didn't tell me to yell poop, but I did go, ah! You know, like, like that, but anyway. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, all right, Acts chapter 2, we'll look at some of the biblical instructions <laughs> later on in the sermon about biblical instructions for healing towards the end. Acts chapter 2, verse number 43, shows again the unique ministry of the apostles and what it was for. It says, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Have you ever seen those healing crusades? Anybody really think there's like the fear of God falls nope. on people? Well, they're all flipping around like a bunch of fishes right, yep. out of water. Right. Yep. You know, no gyrating their bodies everywhere. Yep. Or or their unholy, wicked, satanic laughter. Yeah, falling yep. down backwards. Yep. Wicked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Their unholy, wicked laughter that they do. It's super satanic. Right? Drunk it is satanic. Or they're drunk in the spirit. Yeah. They're drunk. Yeah. Right? So they start laughing. I believe you are drunk. Right. Yep. 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 I absolutely believe you are drunk. Drunk right. on devils. Yep. By the way, just so these charismatic people understand, these mentally and spiritually challenged people understand, they were accused of being drunk because they were mocking God. Right. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. You understand that, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. That wasn't like a positive thing. No, no. Nowhere does it say that there's a Holy Ghost bartender right. and, and they, they <laughs> walked around and they stumbled around. Nobody nobody said Peter. and No, Peter stood up and he preached like the gospel. Right. Right. Yeah. When's the last time you went to see the healing crusade where they were actually preaching the gospel? Right. Right. No, it's Benny Hinn swinging his coat around. <laughs> Seriously. Hey, what did they ask you? <laughs> then, he, then he takes like a softball, a spiritual softball, and he goes like this. <laughs> and he goes, glory in the upper bowl! <laughs> and he throws it, it's like... <laughs> Blaspheming God. He's the greatest... And they all fall ever. down. 
Just like Humpty Dumpty. They all just, <laughs> devil they all just go, you see, you're mocking it. You better believe I am. I'm mocking Amen. it. Just yeah, like Elijah making... mocked the prophets of Baal. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Same way he mocked it. Same way he mocked Amen. it. That's right. Yeah. He mocked them. Amen. Why? Because they don't deserve any respect. That's right. right. Amen. Amen. They're fleecing people and sending people to hell right. and charging them with devils. That's right. Yeah. right. They don't deserve any. No. no. You repent yep. or you're going to burn right. in hell. That's right. right. Amen. That's right. The masses, they think that's religion. You, you think, see, it's not as bad here per capita as it is in foreign countries that I they're know. doing this. Right. They're going to these poor people. Yeah. And they are infusing them with devils. Yep. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Wicked. Yep. Oh, that's okay, little preacher. What are you worried about that? Don't even talk about anything like that. Go back to mm. just being plain. Don't, just don't talk about anything like that. You know, don't talk about anything controversial. Don't repeat Let's just have it all easy, and let's have a little tea and crumpets, and let's have a little bit cakey-wakey, and let's just go on with our Christian life. Yep. Yep. Grow up. That's not the Christian life. I don't know what book you're reading, but that's not the Bible. Amen. That isn't the Word of God. Right. Amen. Amen. Nope. Amen. It's not the war that we're in. No. no. Nope. To have a cakewalk and sit around and and sit around and 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 have and life is easy. Oh, we don't have any enemies. Well, you, you know, me? when you don't, when you keep your mouth shut, you don't have any enemies. Right. right. Yeah. But the Bible says, open your mouth wide to receive what God has. Yeah. And when you do, yeah. you're gonna get some enemies. Marvel not when I'm right. You. Yeah. Acts chapter four, verse number thirty-three, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Amen. How about that? Great power. What was it for? Gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That was for the purpose. That was purpose. Yeah. Right? Acts chapter 5, verse number 12. Turn there. We'll be there for about four verses here. Acts chapter 5, verse number 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the resters, no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. And, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women, in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least of the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Wow. So what happened? That was a sign of wonder. For what? For great fear to come over them and for them to know that this was a working of God. Right. Amen. This was the power of God. Because the Jews seek a sign. Right, right, right after. They had to know that God was working. They had to know from the beginning. You go all through the Bible, the Jews seek a sign. Right. Yep. By the way, that's why the Sabbath was a sign. Was a sign yeah. all right. to who? To Israel. Israel. Yeah. A sign Shadow. to Israel. It's a covenant. Right. Now, right. you're not Israel. Right. Physical Israel. Right. Yep. Right? Not the right. nation of Israel. No. <coughs> Nailed right. to the cross. That's right. Jesus gives you rest. Amen. Jesus does give you rest. That's right. All right. In Acts chapter 19, verse number 11. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. How about that? Special miracles. Yep. Yep. Wonder why? So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs of or aprons. And the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Let me get, let me tell you something. You try to mimic something that is not for you, you may end up like these other guys in verse number thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call them over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure thee, adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of, of one Sceva, a Jew, and a chief of the priests which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Yep. Yeah. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell on them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Right. Amen. Amen. Again, the sign given, the reaction People saved, and fear fell upon them. Great fear fell upon all of them. Right, right, right. right. Does that sound like a, a goofball, charismatic, Todd Bentley, kick that old lady with your biker boot in the face event? <laughs> so, wait, no. <laughs> the Holy Ghost told me to kick that old lady with my biker boot. Kick her in the face. Why doesn't God ever tell me to kick Garrett in the face? 
Yeah. I don't, I've been waiting. I don't know. <laughs> God doesn't like violence. <laughs> Never tells me to kick care in the face. You don't, you don't wear biker boots. I don't. <laughs> but I, I have some, some of these on today. Yeah. They're yeah. enough, right? Yeah. They're close enough. They're shiny. Maybe if we they pray, are. Maybe if we pray hard enough. <laughs> maybe if we pray hard enough, God will let me kick Garrett in the face. <laughs> get the anointing. Get the Somehow I don't believe that Garrett would take that as from God. All right. I'm a Holy Ghost <laughs> drop kick right to the teeth. I, some, something tells me that Garrett would not accept that as being anointed from God to do that to him. An individual soul. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm sorry, Gary, but God led me, so there's nothing I can do about that. I prayed about it beforehand, so it's, it's infallible. It's infallible. It's infallible, so I, I prayed about it beforehand, so I can't do anything wrong. Don't be questioning the Holy Spirit around here. Yeah. yeah don't, be, don't be questioning God right here. Hey, one good thing, Pastor. You have to hire a good lawyer to defend you for a song. I would have to. That's right. That's right. Anyway, but... Um, but obviously that's not a working of the right. Holy Ghost. God it's never told him, kick that lady in the face. Yeah, it's the opposite. <laughs> yeah, I think a God told you that. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think yeah. Satan yeah. told you yeah. that. Yeah. I think Lucifer yeah. told you that. I think I think that's a fallen right. angel told you that. I think a devil told you that. Yep. God right. Almighty didn't tell no. you that. No. Right. No. That's no. not consistent with your. What is that? That's right. that word of knowledge. Yep. Right. Do this and you'll have power. Okay, you stinking witch. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Yep. Exactly what it is. Yeah, you witch. Yep. That's what witches say. Do this. And you, God does everything about it. Do this and you'll have power. Nope. Follow this formula right here and you'll get power for doing it. God says without me you can do nothing. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's sometimes this is plain speech. Hard to take sometimes, but necessary, I believe. Yep. Amen. All right, the apostles laid the foundation for the church, we understand, Ephesians 2.20. And when they died, their sign gifts ceased. Because they were no longer needed. If the sign miracles were operative throughout the church age, they could not have been effective as an apostolic sign gift. Right. If everybody was doing it, right, it wouldn't be special. Right, right, right. exactly. Even in the early churches, all Christians could not do the miracles. The only exceptions were a few men upon whom the apostles had laid hands. Right. There was no general miracle working experience among the first churches. If there had been, Paul could not have pointed to his miracle working ability as a special right. sign. Right. right. Exactly. He said, he told them what the signs of an apostle was. Amen. If everybody was doing that, it wouldn't be a sign of an apostle. Right. Amen. That's right. That's too plain. That's too simple, too simple. right? Yeah. If all could perform miracles, as a matter of course, the Christians at Joppa would not have called for Peter to come from Lydda and raise Dorcas from the dead. Right? Right. They would do that. Peter's miracle that day was the sign of an apostle. Amen. Right. Amen? Amen. Don't let the charismatics get away with their phony crusades and phony miracles and phony right. healing in tongues. They don't have the gifts of the Spirit. They have a perverse spirit, another gospel. Right. I'll tell you why this is important, because a lot of Christians, a lot of Baptists can't defend their faith. Right. When you when you speak out against the gifts, then you try to say something, they, they always say they always say something to you, and then you don't have an answer for them. Right. You ought to have an answer for them. That's why I'm preaching this, so you have an answer for them. Right. Right. Also, because we want to get into the spiritual gifts. Right. And this is one, it's it was a temporary gift that was given. It's one of those temporary gifts that are listed on miracles. Okay? That those are and signs; those were temporary gifts. They weren't going to last forever. Right. Do all have the gifts of healing? No. That was a rhetorical question, right? But no, they don't. They knew that all of them did because God placed in the body who needed, and then they would fade away. Right. right. Those sign gifts; those gifts would fade away. Right. Amen. Amen. But they have a perverse spirit of the gospel. Next, not all had the gift of healing, and it did phase out. How about this? Uh, turn to First Timothy chapter five. Yep. First Timothy chapter five and verse number twenty-three. Timothy was not healed supernaturally of his off infirmities. Yep. Uh -oh, That's was right. he? Uh oh, what happened? Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Well, Timothy must have been in sin, right? That's why he was sick. Yeah, exactly. He didn't have any faith. Nah. He just had hands laid on him by Paul. He saw signs and wonders and miracles, but he didn't have any faith. He didn't right. write any of that stuff. Right? Think about it. Right. He wasn't healed. Huh. Right. Next, Trophimus, 
was not healed when he was sick in Melitum. Right. In 2 Timothy 4.20. Turn there. Almost on the death. Mm-hmm. What's it say here? Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left in Melitum sick. So he left him there, and he was sick, right? Yep. Wait. Why didn't Paul just send him a handkerchief and... <laughs> right. Why did he do that? Because... The gifts were fading away. Paul knew that. And God, it's not God's will that you that, that it's not always God's will that you don't get sick. Right. That's right. Okay? It's not. Now, you and I can do a lot to make ourselves sick. Yep. That's our fault. Right? right? But it's not God's will, or always God's will that you never be sick. That's right. Right. That's just the truth. You can try your faith. Right? Yep. But sometimes you're gonna get sick. Paul was not healed of the sickness described in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7. Turn there. Unless I should be exalted above measure, verse number 7. Through the abundance of the revelations that there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now listen to me, this is not talking about sin. Right. You understand that? I've heard some people try to say, Well, this thorn in my flesh is sin. No, it's not sin. So the messenger of Satan. Right. right it's not sin. It's not me living in sin and saying, well, it's just a it's just a thorn that I have. It's my love for pornography is just a thorn <laughs> yeah. in the flesh. Right. Yeah. No, it's not a thorn in the flesh. <laughs> right. A messenger of Satan. Right. Right? Not yeah, not not you loving sin. And you better be careful not to blame the devil for everything. That's right. You better be careful about right. that. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. a dangerous thing that we can right. all do. You start blaming right. the devil for everything. Yeah. That's right. Come on. You yeah. got it. And not looking at your own heart and saying, no, I'm wicked. That's right. Because the Bible doesn't say the, the devil is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. It says your heart right. is deceitful above all yeah. things and desperately wicked. That's right. Right? That's right. Remember that. Don't blame somebody else for your own sin. That's right. You never get victory by blaming something or someone else for your sin. That's right. That's right. That's right. Paul was not healed of his sickness described there. The Greek word, and David Bob gets in the Greek word for infirmities, is elsewhere translated sickness and disease. Three times Paul asked God to take away this affliction, but the Bible says he refused to do so. Paul was told this infirmity was something God wanted him to have for his spiritual well-being. Right. Upon learning this, Paul surrendered to God's will and wisely said this, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Amen. Amen. This is a perfect example for Christians today. We should pray for healing and release from other kinds of trials, but when God does not heal and does not release us, we must bow to his will and accept that situation as something right. from the hand of God. Amen. This is not a lack of faith. It is wise obedience to the sovereignty yes. of Almighty God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yep. Next, I want to I cover the phony charismatics and Pentecostals that can't heal. All right? That build their ministries on healing that never healed anyone. That's right. John Dowie. His daughter was severely burned and died because he refused to allow medical treatment. John Dowie was part of the Holy Apostolic Catholic over in uh, Illinois. I can't remember the, the whole name of them, but you know the holiness movement. He's basically before then. He ran this town called Zion. This, oh, no. this city called Zion. He also taught flatters. Yeah, and he had a theology. Did he? <laughs> That's he had a theocracy. He had a theocracy over there. Wow. And he got in trouble. He was... A lot of, a lot of scandals. A lot of scandals, and wow. he was kind of like Joseph Smith a little oh, bit, like I think. Yeah, thing. yeah, he was making a ton of money. What's that? He's like a fornicator and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and his letter was called Healing Leaves. Remember I told you guys I had those? Those are the books I had. Oh, okay. His original books there, those Healing Leaves or whatever. Um, wow. Something like that. Yep. How about Oral Roberts? Uh, the March uh, 1952 Oral, Oral Ripoff. The March 1952 issue of his magazine, Healing Waters, had three great medical doctors on cover bragging on Roberts. But this was exposed as a lie. They weren't real doctors. Pastor Stiegel investigated Roberts' healing claims and found not no change in anyone. 
A Toronto doctor examined 32 people that were supposedly healed through Robert's ministry and found no case of healing. At least one had died. Wow. Yeah. At a healing meeting in, in Texas in 1950, a storm knocked the healing tent down and 50 people had to go to the hospital. <laughs> I don't know, that doesn't look good. <laughs> Between 1951 and 1959, five people died in Robert's healing meetings. Wow. Robert's goodness. healing meetings. That's crazy. In 1977, Roberts claimed God commanded him to build a hospital. And in 1980, he claimed he saw a 900 foot tall Jesus. Wow. Jesus. 900 giant, huh? How do you measure? He got him in the yeah. That's what I was wondering. I wonder if that's the same thing Schneblander saw. Shit. I don't know. Yeah, that giant devil. Yeah. <laughs> he saw he saw a nine hundred foot tall Jesus who promised he would pay all the bills for the hospital wow. and that it would be a success. But in nineteen eighty nine the hospital closed because of debts. Wow. He must have had like a hundred foot long hair too. <laughs> Failing. Yeah, fail. That's a lot of hair. No, that's a lot of drugs. Right. <laughs> Radical elephants. That Radical is like tripping to see that. Okay? Wasn't the Jesus of the Bible? Right? That, that was a vision, all right, but it was from peyote or something. Yeah. yeah. You don't see a 900 foot tall oh, Jesus yeah. unless you're on some serious dope. Yep. Huh? Yeah. That's just the truth, all right? Hey. You start seeing 900 foot tall people talking to you, you're on some drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when they want to pay your bills. Huh? Iowa Nobody wants to pay your yeah. bills. Yeah. <laughs> you are tripping. And it tells you it's going to pay all your bills? Yeah. And for million dollar hospitals? That ain't Jesus. He don't come 900 feet tall <laughs> having a conversation with you. What's the matter with you? He's Who actually it. believed this nonsense and sent this man money? Right. A, lot a, lot of, a, lot. a lot of people. A I think I went there. Is that an Oak? That's in Oklahoma. Yeah. And I actually think I didn't go there, but I was staying at a hotel right across the street. From his whole complex. Yeah. That was a nice hotel, too. I got it for like 50 bucks. It was like $150 a night. Wow. It's a good deal. But don't worry. Roberts was already dead, so I didn't see him. But then, <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know where I was staying. I was just like, okay, hey, there's a hotel right there. Big, huge hotel. And right across was Oral Ripoff's University. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And this weird... What was it? That hand, Hannah? That weird, spooky hand. I hands. Some pictures of that. Yeah. Yeah. I have some pictures of that somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And I went up there. I went up to it. And I was like, what? Is that? Isn't that where the street preachers got rebuked and they brought like cookies to the sodomites? No, that's Bob Jones. Yeah. Oh, Bob Jones. Bob Jones University gave <laughs> cookies to sodomites and were mad at the preachers for they preaching said, well, against. We're we're not with those guys. And, they, yeah. they, they, and I would have been like, I know you're not. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody thinks that you are. <laughs> they gave him sandwiches from my understanding. Sandwiches? Billy was there. Yeah. Billy was there? Yeah. Wow. Did he give sandwiches? They were the ones the they were up there preaching to him. Oh, Billy was preaching? <laughs> yeah. It was because it was, it was they were in Asheville, and that's not that far from Boston. I couldn't have been there. <laughs> I would have had a lot of fun there. Yeah. yeah, yeah you wouldn't have got a sandwich, sandwich though, man. I wouldn't have got a sandwich. I would have went over and tried to get one from them. Give me a sandwich. I would have got one. give you a sandwich. You're not with us. I would have got one. Garrett would have got one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of my yeah. yeah. Sorry, sir, you're not a queer. You can't have a sandwich. <laughs> no sandwich for straight people. Well, I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> Fine with that. Thank you. <laughs> Keep your sandwiches. <laughs> I want your queer sandwiches for queer sandwiches. <laughs> Daisy petals. Oh, boy. All right. Anyway, now, now we'll move on to William... Branham. Is that oh, how you say his name? Branham. 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 Thank you, Branham. His healing camp, yeah, he is in hell. His healing yeah. campaigns in 1946 were the start of the modern Pentecostal healing revival. He claimed that an angel always stood by him and told him what to say. Sure. Believe well, it? Same I angel believe it? Top it. Yeah. Yeah. Same one, same one that talked to Joseph Smith, probably? Yeah, Moroni yep. and Top Bit. Yep. Tells him that He said that he could distinguish types of sickness by vibrations in his hand. Uh oh. oh I've yeah. heard that before. Right. Which? We have the personal testimony of Alfred Pohl, a former Pentecostal, who worked in one of Branham's crusades in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Sasquatch? Sasquatch. Bigfoot. Pohl prayed, Pohl prayed for the bedridden patients who were transported to the meeting, and he declared all of them healed, but many died soon after. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're all healed. They're dead. <laughs> it's not the anointing it's that you want. To be funny, but it is. No, but you're, that's not the anointing that you want. That's 
right. A local newspaper checked on the reported healings and couldn't find one genuine case. Yet all these guys made a ton of money right. traveling around in the name of Jesus. Right. How about Catherine Kuhlman? Oh, wow. There's a witch and a half yep. for you. That's right. Surgeon William Nolan published the book A Doctor in Search of a Miracle about his attempt to find cases of people who were genuinely healed through Coleman's ministry. He did not find any such cases. Kurt Koch ex examined 28 alleged healings that occurred under Coleman's ministry in Minneapolis, but he did not find even one clear case of healing from an organic disease. So, but now we got a lot of witches. Right. But don't you find it funny that this all happened in Minneapolis? Yeah, they're, yep. they're still going yep. over a grave for power. Yep. Right grave sucking? Yeah. Yeah. people are. Yeah. That's free. Okay, so we all know she... And isn't she the witch that put her hands on Benny Hinn? Yep. Yeah, wow. Benny Hinn goes to her grave to this day. The visits. That doesn't surprise power. me. Yep. Wow. Benny. Men, men love her, too. It's insane. Yeah. What's they're, that? They're street creatures that, like, post her She's stuff. So Catherine Coleman? Possessed. Yeah. Well, that's all right. There's SDA men, and they all they do is they they, they do uh, what's her name? Ellen, that witch, Ellen G. Witch. Yeah. That lady. I don't know how. I just want to look at these. I want to go to a Seventh Day Adventist convention with all of these limp wristed men there, stand out there, and say, "Are any of you really men?" Yeah. They'll just look at the floor. I know. I want them to look at the floor. I want them to be ashamed of following yeah. a woman. Yeah, right. Why are you following around this Jezebel? Hey, right. What's the matter with you? Did you drop your manhood somewhere? Here, let me pick it up for you. Yeah, right. It's ridiculous. Why would you even do that? Right, right about now, there's a thousand Jezebels getting very angry with me. <laughs> and what you don't understand is I like that even more. <laughs> that doesn't bother me. I enjoy that. I really do enjoy that part yeah. of it. <laughs> because they're so wicked and satanic yeah. that... that you know what? You have to war against that spirit. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That is wicked. Spirit. That drive furiously, right? <laughs> That's right. You can't. You can't back up on a Jezebel one bit. You yep. got to go straight through. You need them right. to fire you up. Straight through. And I, I always get one of those emails that come through of a Jezebel it's saying like I'm fuel. doing it wrong. It's like yeah. fuel, right? And they follow these women around. I'm like, how do you even biblically? Biblically, how do you do that? How do you even have that in your mind that that's okay biblically to do? Have you read the great controversy? Have you read the great controversy? <laughs> no, I haven't. I'm not gay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Nate said that when he was when he when he first before he was saved or right after he got saved or something like that, there was there was a a, a man and a lady that were Seventh Day Adventists, yeah. and the lady was like kind of in charge of her husband. That was when I was lost. Oh, it was when you were lost, sorry. It was, when, it was when he was lost. But she was like in charge of her husband, and he was like, well, you better ask my wife. I mean, seriously? Go yeah, ask man. my wife. Yeah, better ask my wife. <laughs> ask him questions. Wait, can you show me one apostle that went, hey, can you ask my wife? Yeah. He's like, she knows better than I do. She knows better than I do. Wow. <laughs> and they actually like listen to this lady, this psychopath lady, prophesy in front of them. Oh. And go into trances. I went over that in the SDA. Thing, but but go into trances and to do all this other stuff and all these devils that she saw and everything yeah. like that. And, and, and all these guys are like standing around like, cool, this is our prophetess. She all right. Prophet. She didn't blink for like 45 minutes. What? She didn't blink for like 45 minutes. Yeah. Held yeah. a 20 pound book out. Like Held a 20 pound book out, those big, huge yeah. I have one at home. The binding is like that thick. And she held that. Whoops. The binding is like that thick and she held it out. For like 20 minutes or something yeah. like that. She's like 80 but pounds. She, she got her supernatural power from getting hit in the head with a rock. <laughs> Did she? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. She had an injury. You yeah. can't make this stuff up. Oh, man. <laughs> she started having visions. I know. And then she... <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it gets really squirrely. But these people like Catherine Coleman, they follow. Oh, she's in office. Really? Where do you find one of those that did that? Go back and listen to... My sermon on what about Deborah <laughs> and other lame excuses. I love that sermon. Yeah. And use. What about Deborah? Yep. Deborah. It's really sick. Right. It just it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I just don't know how any man could do that. Like how do you, how do you even talk to your children like that? Like how do you look at your son and be like, all right, let's go listen to this lady preach to us. <laughs> be a man, son. Yeah. Be a man. <laughs> Put on a dress. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like how, how do you how do you even do that? Yeah, even as a lost person. 
Even as a lost person, I've no, I would have no respect. Like I, when I see it, when I was lost, I would never. I would have laughed at that. Right. I'd be like, give me a break. Who's this lady? Right. The more, <laughs> hey, Pastor, the more power that a, a nation gives women, the more limp-wristed the men become. It's true. That's right. It's true. Exactly. Absolutely. Right. Ready for Hillary? Oh, yeah. no. Bunch of the Queen Witch. Everybody, every <laughs> man. The Mother Witch Hillary. Well, the Mother Witch. Anyway. All of the men, the except mother. a few of us, will be. Uh, wow, this is already uh, an hour in. Yeah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next we're going to move on to a guy, John Wimber. Oh, yeah. uh -oh. John Wimber. He Wimber was the leader of the Vineyard Churches. Yep. Yeah, oh, boy. Guys, he conducted signs and wonders conferences and taught that every Christian should lay hands on the sick and heal them. At a conference in Indianapolis in 1990 that David Cloud attended, he said that God had sent healing angels. But I didn't see any healings of those who were in the wheelchairs. Right. After a Wimber crusade in England, five medical doctors found no genuine healings and called his ministry hypnosis. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow, Franz, that might just be true. It, yeah, it is true, yeah. In an interview with a magazine in Australia in 1990, Wimber said he could heal headaches, but that he did not have success with serious sickness. No. What did you do, give him an Advil? Right. <laughs> Here's Tell him to drink some water? No, no. Exactly. Right? Next, Charles and Francis Hunter. Anybody ever heard of them? I, I've seen some of their materials. They had a wide-reaching healing ministry and claimed that healing is promised by God and that every Christian can heal others. During one healing crusade in the Philippines, crusade in the Philippines, Frances Hunter had to go to the doctor for a sickness. And another time, she had to be transported home in a wheelchair. I think your mojo is not working right there or something. Your little, you know, it's not working. Charles Hunter claimed that he could heal baldness, but he was bald until his death. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because he was spreading his powers to it, grow hair. So. <laughs> it didn't work, Charles. <laughs> huh, no, out. seriously. Who gives a guy money that walks around bald and says he can heal bald? <laughs> <laughs> who even shows up to a meeting like that? Right. Who would show up to that meeting? Honestly. Right. Who would show up to that meeting? The guy says, okay, I can heal baldness, but you're bald, dude. You're bald. You can't. It doesn't work. Well, to the bald, I okay, do it. Heal bald. yourself. Well, I don't want hair. You do it first. I don't want hair. I want to see a hair pop out. That's what I would say. If you were a lost guy and you strolled in and you saw this crusade, this guy's like, I can heal bald. It's like, dude, you're bald. Do it now. Do it now. Heal yourself. I can't hey, hair to everyone else. It's easier to wash your face than mess with all that hair. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Famous healing evangelist A.A. A. Allen was arrested for drunk driving during a healing revival in 1955. Wow and then fled bail and refused to face his crime. He divorced his long-suffering wife in 1967. Wow. Three years later, he died alone in a cheap motel in San Francisco while his team was conducting a healing crusade in West Virginia. Wow, <laughs> that makes sense. He was 59 years old, and he had destroyed his liver with his drunkenness. Right. <laughs> I don't think that healing worked. Right, that's right. After famous healing evangelist Jack Coe died of polio in spite of his belief that God guaranteed healing, his wife published a series of articles exposing the fraud of key healing evangelists. Oh. His wife's like, well, my husband died of it. He was a liar. In 1984, evangelist Duncan Late Lighton followed the Derek Prince team through Zambia where thousands of miracle healings were claimed. But Leighton was unable to document any genuine miracle healings. That's from Leighton's Signs of one, one Wonders, cited with Peter Masters, The Healing Epidemic. In 1923, following a Charles Price crusade in Vancouver, British Columbia, a group of physicians, professors, lawyers, and pastors followed up on alleged healings. Of the 350 people that had claimed to be healed, they could not find any physical change in the conditions of 301. 39 had died within six months of the meeting. Five had become insane. Wow. And five others appeared to be cured of, a, of nervous disorders. That was from the Journal of the Indiana Medical Association, 1959. The Bible warns, though, of false miracles at the end of the age. Right. Yep. You know, it's interesting to note this. Every time the New Testament mentions miracles in the context of the end of the church age, it is always referring to false, right. demonic yep. miracles. Yep. 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 So we're Jesus warned that false teachers would be so clever and convincing that they would deceive the very elect if possible. Turn to Matthew 24, right. verse 24. Right. Amen. False Christ. 
Mm -hmm. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, and as much as if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. And then in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 7, we're warned again about these miracles and signs and wonders. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, and the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And what happens? For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. What is that? That's a warning against those miracles. Yep. Those false miracles. Looking for those things, not looking right. for the word of God. Right. Salvation too simple for you? Is that what the problem is? Yep. Probably. Yeah. Right? You yeah. need a sign and a wonder because salvation is too simple? That's right. Yep. Revelation 13, 13 warns us again in the end times. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Those are all warnings for the end times. That's right. Those are warnings for that. You was healed from the sword. Wound. Right. Now, next year, this is where we'll kind of finish up here, but it'll take a little while to get through, so we got to kind of hurry, but um, we're already an hour into this, but that's okay. We'll go right into lunch as soon as we're done here. Uh, but turn to James chapter 5, please. Because I want to show you the biblical method of divine healing. Amen. What God says about divine healing. Cannabis. <laughs> no, it's not cannabis. <laughs> Believe it or not. Right, Garrett? Right. I believe it, Garrett. It's not. I believe it, too. Worship, worship Christ, small crime. Yeah. But there was once a lost theologian. Or we, no, you were saved, weren't you? Who, me? Yeah. No, no, no. We, no, you weren't saved, though? No, when that Instagram account was up. No. Oh, no, that picture's not of you after you were saved. That was before you were saved. Not when the book of Yates was written. No. When the book of Yates was written? No. That's, that's when I was definitely lost. So. When the chronic was part of your daily spiritual walk? Yeah, if you notice, there was nothing about Jesus on that Instagram. He was just kind of there. You seriously look like you had like 10 different kinds of devils in you that had that picture. <laughs> yeah. He seriously looked possessed in that yep. picture. That's, that's what that music does to you. Yep. Siri came on for that. Possessed? Yeah. That's because that's possessed. She's it like, is. I know all about that. You rang? <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't. James chapter 5, verse number 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Amen. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. All right. Confess your faults one to another. And pray for one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Right. Amen. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. <coughs> and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Okay, so I want to explain this to you. First, you have to consider the ministers. Here, the elders of the church are called to minister to the sick rather than someone with the gift of healing. Amen. Okay? Uh, the elders do not rebuke the sickness or cast out devils. They simply anoint the sick person with oil and pray for him. Right. Right. All right? That's the first thing to consider. Next, I want you to consider the sickness itself. The word sick in verse, in verse 15, 14 to 15 does not refer to a minor thing like a cold. Right. Right? Because it says verse 15 indicates that James is referring to a type of sickness that causes one to be bedridden. Yep. Because it says the Lord shall raise him up. Yeah. Right. Yep. So it's somebody that is very cast down. Yep. Yep. All right? You don't have to be raised up unless you're bedridden or otherwise have a pretty serious illness, whatever right. that may be, that right. casts you down. Not like, oh, I have a sniffle. Come anoint me as oil. <laughs> 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 All right, so that makes sense, right? Yeah. Okay, next. 
consider the call. It says the sick person must take the initiative in this matter. James does not give support for the elders running around with their oil anointing all, everybody they can find. Okay, so he says, let him call. So the person call, right? Let him call for the elders, you right? Won't, you won't send me a private prayer show? No, I won't send you a private prayer show. I don't have one of those, so. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Next, consider the context. It says, call the elders of the church. There is not a healing ministry or camp. This is not a healing ministry or campaign. Right. It is not a sacrament. By the way, let me say this. I'm going to be teaching on this soon. Not all elders are bishops. Right. right. Understand right. that. Amen. Not all elders are bishops. There are elder men in this church that are elder in the faith. They are older in the faith. They've been around. They are elders, but they are not all ordained right. bishops. There is a difference in that. They're elder women. Okay? Right. There are elder women too as well. Right. All right. So there are. So there's not, that's not just one word uh, that, that describes one office. No, it doesn't. There's differences there, and I'll prove that when I teach on that, and I will be teaching on the multiplicity of elders, uh, the multiplicity of bishops and things like that. In the future, I'm going to make a lot of friends. I don't have that many anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but anyway, it'll be fun. Trust me. Amen. <laughs> anyway, but uh, it says call the elders. It says this is not a healing ministry or campaign. It's not a sacrament performed by a priest. The practice described by James assumes membership in a church. All right. Those who despise pastors or elders and think they don't need to be members of a church are shut out from this practice. Right. Right. You can't claim this have my neighbors a Christian, so I'm going to call for him. Right. Doesn't say that. Right? doesn't say that. These are members of a church. These are people that have covenanted together. These are people together. Right. Amen. Right? Consider the procedure. It says, first, the sick person is to confess his faults. Sin can bring sickness. Right, right. It can. I mean, we understand that. We can see that in John chapter 5, verse number 14, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 29 and 30. Observe, though, that we are instructed to confess our faults, not our sins. Right? right. It says, confess your faults, not your sins. Right. right. Catholic Church. Right. He says, uh, David Klaus says, the standard Greek word for sin is harmar harmartia, harmatia or whatever. What's that? Hamartia. Thank you, hamartia. But that is not used here. Instead, James uses a different word. He says it's a word of parapatoma, which refers to a side slip, lapse, deviation, or error. You know, not that I go to the Greek, but I understand what he's saying here. Elsewhere, it is translated a fall or an offense, a trespass. James is instructing us to confess those faults that are committed against our other brethren. Right. Amen. He is not asking us to confess our deepest sins that we've committed against God. Right. Those are confessed to God directly. Amen. We confess faults to man that we have committed against man. Right. And we confess sins to God that we've committed against God. Right. Right. The confession referred to is for faults Amen. with reference to one another. That is where one has injured another. And nothing is said of confessing faults to those <laughs> whom we have not injured at all. Right. That means if you had a wicked thought about somebody in your mind, you don't go tell them about it. Right. Yeah. Well, I had a wicked thought about your wife. Well, don't tell people that stuff. You'll get punched in the nose. Right. Yeah, exactly. You confess that to God, right? Don't go tell somebody that. Amen. Hey, brother, I need to talk to you. I had this bad thought about... No, you don't need to talk to me. You need to talk to God. Right. Amen. Amen. When yeah. you have bad thoughts in there, you go tell... You take that to God. Right. Amen. That's not for you to share with everybody else. Right. Somebody's going to punch you in the nose. That's right. right? And they're going to think very wickedly of you then. They'll have a hard time even talking to you or trusting you because you don't talk about things like that. You right. get them right with God. Right. Amen. You confess them to God. That's right. Amen. Faults are something that you've actively done outside. Yep. Visible. Visible faults. Right. Right, so it's, it's, it's the confession referred to as is for faults and with reference to one another. That is where one has injured another, and nothing is said of confessing faults to those whom we have not injured at all. Modern versions, such as the NIV and the NASV, erroneously read sin yep. instead of faults. That's right. Yep. yep. Wow. I wonder why. In James 5.16, because they follow the corrupt Westcott and Hork Greek text, which replaces Count those two words. Bibles. Right. So what do they do? They, what's that do? Well, that changes the whole. That's a doctrinal change right exactly. there. Yep. And it's also a practice change, practical change, too. Right. Because now guess what's going to happen? 
You're going to cause a big stir in a church if you start. So these guys used to have these meetings, by the way, where all these people would stand up. There are churches that did this, that they would stand up and they would start confessing things that they thought. Wicked. That's evil. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it's true. evil. That's what happens when you have a Jesuit on the They were like, well, we got to confess our faults. Uh, so we're going to talk about everything. No, you don't. Excellent. Listen, there are things in your heart that need to be confessed to God that right. no yeah. man needs to ever hear. Exactly. Amen. 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 No man needs to ever hear you utter those words. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Your wife doesn't need you to utter those words. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. Listen right. to me. Yep. Your wife doesn't need to hear that. You no. take that to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Search my heart. He's the high priest. Amen. 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 Right. The. Right. You don't. You don't. You don't take him to anybody else. You don't share those thoughts like that. Amen. Mm -hmm. That are wicked. All right. But confession of faults can bring spiritual victory. Uh, David Cloud tells the story of when he was a young Christian. He said he was struggling to quit smoking and had been defeated many times. Finally, he said he stood up during a Wednesday prayer meeting, confessed this to the church, and asked them to pray. And he said, I have never smoked since then. God gave me the victory over the stubborn habit through confession and prayer. Amen. So that's an example of that. Right. Okay. Secondly, it says the sick person is to be anointed with oil in the name of the Lord. By invoking the name of the Lord, G uh, James is saying that this procedure is to be done by the Lord's authority. To anoint in the name of the Lord is to acknowledge that only by His power are people blessed. Amen. We have no power in ourselves and there is no power in religious rituals. Amen. The fact that the sick is anointed in the name of the Lord shows it is not a matter of using oil as a remedy for sickness. Right. As in Luke 10.34. It is a matter rather of anointing with oil ceremonially as a symbol and testimony of the Lord's healing power. Right. In the Old Testament, the anointing of oil was symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Oil was fitting, a fitting symbol of the spirit or spiritual principle of life. Right. By virtue of its power to sustain and fortify the vital energy and the anointing oil which was prepared according to divine instructions, was there a symbol of the spirit of God as the principle of spiritual life which proceeds from God and fills the natural being of the creature with the powers of divine life. Amen. Since James does not say what kind of oil is to be used or how the anointing is to be done, this is up to each church to decide. It could be olive oil, baby oil, or vegetable oil. CBD. No, well, baby oil, but... <laughs> no CBD oil. I don't know what that is, but... <laughs> What's that? Olive oil, olive oil, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about vegetable oil. <laughs> Biblically, it probably would be olive oil. <laughs> the elders might anoint the head, the forehead, or the head, hand, and foot. If the exact type of oil and exact type of anointing were a necessary part of the procedure, the Bible would have been more specific. Right, man. God would have told us what kind of oil, exactly. what we had to do. Third, prayer. that's right. Yeah. Third, the sick is to be prayed for. Prayer is mentioned seven times wow. in James chapter 5, verse number 13 to 18. Wow. Seven times it's mentioned. Yeah. Thus the emphasis is on prayer rather than on the oil or the anointing. Right. right. Get it? Yeah, Why? Because right. the healing is done through prayer. Right. Right. The prayer of faith shines from God. Right. Right. Yep. What is the prayer of faith? It is not faith that God will surely heal, but faith that God will accomplish His perfect will. Amen. Right. Amen. Compare Hebrews 11.6. God requires that we believe that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Right. This is what we must believe. The prayer of faith is faith in God's goodness to do what is right and best in His perfect will in that particular situation. The first principle of prayer is that it must be submitted to God's will. If we ask anything according to his will, this is what Jesus taught, thy will be done. Amen. Faith obeys when it does not understand everything. We don't have to understand why we should follow this procedure. We only have to obey. Right. Then consider the promise. First, this is not a promise of healing in all cases. To properly interpret the Bible, we must compare scripture with scripture. And elsewhere, we see that God does not always heal. Second, I already went over those with you with Timothy and, and Trophimus and many others. Melitus, uh, with the sick and Melitus. Second, James does not promise immediate healing. James does not say that, does not say when or how God will do this. He doesn't tell us that. Third, observe that James does not say God will heal the sick. He says that God will save the sick. Right. There is more to saving the sick than merely healing his physical body. In Isaiah 63, verse number 9, it refers to all that God does for us. Right? 
There is also spiritual healing that the Bible talks about, being healed spiritually. God saved Paul in the situation described in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10 by giving him wisdom to accept the trial. But he still saved him, right, from that. We know that God often does heal the sick, but biblically prayer is asking rather than demanding. If the prayer of faith always healed the sick, no believer would die. Right, right, exactly. Whereas we know that every single believer in the past 2,000 years has died. Yep. Right. Further, Paul looked upon death as an advantage. Amen. Death was a victory. Amen. Christ is far better. That's right. Now, and in closing, there's just three verses here. But uh, verses that Pentecostals use and Charismatics used in healing the doctrine to take they take it out of context and they try to use it to support their divine healing. The, the emphasis Isaiah chapter fifty three verse number five. Okay. Turn there. You know you know what they're talking about. Right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53 verse number 5 But he was wounded for our transgressions He was bruised for our iniquities The chastisement of our peace was upon him And with his stripes we are healed right. Now this is talking about salvation, salvation. Right. This is talking about being redeemed by the blood yeah. of the Lamb This is not talking about healing in the atonement That's perverted from the curse of sin. Right yeah. It's being healed and made new, a new creature in Christ. Right. The blood. Yeah. That's right. Right. Regeneration. Salvation has two parts: spiritual, which is the major part of salvation we enjoy in this life, and physical, which we will enjoy in the next life. Right. Right. Exactly. One day we will be. Yep. One day we'll be perfected, that yep. complete man, that perfect man. Not yet. Right. right? Man. Perfected in body. Amen. Made like Christ. Amen. When we see him, we shall be like, like him. Like him. Amen. Right. right. That's what it's talking about. That's the perfection. Right, glorified, that's right. Much of our salvation is still future. That's right. We understand that by Romans chapter 8, verse number 22 to 25. I'm not going to go through that. We've talked about that before. This passage describes the Christian life in the present world as suffering, waiting, bondage to this present body of sin, and groaning and travailing. Right. Right? Yep. right? Yep. You get an injury? Oh, man. Yeah. Groaning and travailing. <laughs> right? I was doing some groaning and travailing yesterday. Amen. Hurt. I didn't say, well, God failed me because he right. in the atonement. Right. Yep, Don't quote that to people. Yeah. With his stripes, we are healed. Be healed. Yeah. yeah. Just curse yourself and die, Joe. All right, you're not, a, you're not a superhero, okay? That is super wicked. This isn't like a, a wizard. You're not like a wizard or something, okay? That's not what the Bible says. That's heresy. Yeah, yep. it is heresy. Yep. John chapter 14, verse number 12 is another verse they use. First, it can't mean that believers will do greater miracles than these. We talked about this. They said that greater works than these. We talked about those works. It means that believers would do greater works than Christ, not greater miracles. The right. greater works are such things as preaching the gospel to the ends of the earth yep. and seeing multitudes saved. Amen. Right. Amen. Yep. Those are the greatest works. Yep. Right? And then Psalms, uh, chapter 103, verse number 3. The two most important methods you have to understand of biblical interpretation are context and comparing Scripture with Scripture. When we examine the context of Psalms, uh, 103 verse 3 we see that the psalmist is describing God's general goodness to believers so turn there because this is where they yeah oh my soul twist this they twist this and make this see that's promise healing guaranteed healing the atonement no it's not a bunch of liars who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases that's what they say the statement that he heals all our diseases does not mean that he always heals every disease any more than the statement in verse number 5 means that he always renews our youth. Exactly. Right? right? Who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Well, we're not going to, I mean, we're going to die. Yep. Right? David had a loathsome disease in his loins. Right, exactly. What chapter was that? Chapter was that? Psalm, Psalm 103. Yep. The statement that he heals all our diseases does not mean that. Um... We know that believers, like unbelievers, grow old, get sick, and die. That is because the wages of sin is death, yep. right. and each of us has sin. Yep. Further, when we compare Scripture with Scripture, we know that there are cases in which God does not heal, and we've already seen those cases in the Bible. Exactly. So we understand that's not what that's talking about. It's, it's not talking about that in everything. David is speaking of you know things that have went on, whatever. But the point is, is that some people get healed and some people don't. Yep. Right. All right. Yeah. God chooses to heal people, and God chooses to take them home. That's right. Right. Yeah. All right. right. 
but he's still God, no matter if you're healed or not. Amen. Right. You go, one, but by the way, the promise is that you will be saved. Amen. 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 Be saved from that. So death, if you die as a Christian with a disease, James chapter 5 is still ethical. You were saved from that disease. Amen. Yep. You understand that? Amen. Why? Because you were saved and renewed, and you're gone now. Amen. Yep. Right. And that disease has no hold on you. Because the flesh has no hold on you. Amen. Amen. So understand that. So these guys, they teach this heresy. Yep. That's what right. it is. All right. That's what it's heresy. And it's damnable heresy. It's dangerous. Yep. The focus is never the gospel. Yep. The focus is always on outward signs and wonders. That's right. Which is a small portion of the scriptures. Yep. The daily Christ life is being crucified with Christ and living that sanctified, denying of the flesh lifestyle. That's not right. a bunch of games, not a bunch of meetings that people come together and they have a Holy Ghost bartender and and uh, their you know their uh, holy unholy laughter and and kicking people in the face and running around and smacking people with your coat and knocking them in the forehead and all none of that stuff is in the Word of God. They've made it all up because they're they're a bunch of false prophets yep. that are deceived by devils that are leading people to hell. Those aren't the spiritual gifts of of, of miracle healing. They were temporary gifts that were given, signed to the apostles, for a purpose, for the foundation of the church. Amen. And now we have the Word of God. Amen. Somebody said, what, what makes you think the Word of God is that which is perfect has come? Because it's perfect. Amen. 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 And the body is to be perfect yeah. when it has this book. Yeah. Amen. Purified seven times. Right. So, you're still trying to, I, I want to see, I want to see your interpretations, you bunch of phonies out there. I want to see it. Prove it. Prove it, you phonies. I think you've got spirits of devils in you. Right. That's what I think you have. You need to repent before you die and go to a sinner, a devil's hell for all of eternity. Right. Father, Lord, we thank you for this. We thank you for the truth. Pray, Lord, we live it every day of our lives. Thank you, Lord. Help us to teach this to others, Lord. They would understand about these lying signs and wonders, these, these, these signs and lying wonders that are done, and these fake miracle crusades and all these prostituted versions of gifts. Lord, that are out there that the devil uses, that that spirit of Jezebel uses to seduce your people, Lord. And I pray, Father, that we would teach the truth and rightly divide it and explain it to others. They be not deceived by this nonsense, but they understand what the Word of God says about healing. We believe in divine healing through prayer. We do not believe in faith healers that are apostate, that are charismatic con artists. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.